here's my book review of For the King by Catherine Delors. Catherine Delors' second novel, For the King, is about a plot to assassinate Napoleon Bonaparte on Christmas Eve, 1800. But in many ways, it's very much about today. For one thing, its narrative structure is as familiar as a network TV series. It's a police procedural. The reader knows who the perpetrators are from the start, so it's not a whodunit. Most of the story is about how Chief Investigator Roche Michel discovers for himself who they are and how he tracks them down. Herein lies another influence of contemporary genre fiction. In the film noir detective story, the main character's inquiry leads him progressively deeper into the corruption that pervades the big city. And in the most intensely psychological and arguably the best of those stories, the detective eventually discovers that he's been betrayed by the girl, and in the most chilling variants, he finds out to his everlasting regret that he is personally somewhat to blame for the crime itself. I won't stretch this parallel further for fear of spilling spoilers. Roche is modern in another important sense. Politically and morally, he is a citizen of today's European Union. His sympathies lie with the revolution, with the same idealistic egalitarianism that shaped the American Constitution. Roche's father is a sheep herder turned tavern owner, a self-made entrepreneur, a small business capitalist. The heavies of the story, Mikhail's adversaries, are reactionary royalists called Shuans. Although some of them profess admiration for the deposed king, who is nowhere to be found in the book, the majority of them simply hanker for their lost swaggering privileges and aristo status. They resent the new centralized government control Bonaparte is imposing on every aspect of their lives. And then there's the practice of torturing witnesses and suspects as problematic an interrogation technique then as it is now. Delore can't help editorializing, and I quote, Roche reported the torture to the prefect, who had dismissed his concerns on the grounds that the search for information of vital importance to the safety of the nation justified such means. Roche disagreed. Most of what could be obtained in this manner was false confessions or information that reflected what the suspect thought the torturer wanted to hear. Roche had argued in vain that a skillful interrogator could obtain better information without disgracing himself and the entire police. The most compelling aspect of this story is psychological and emotional, and has only the barest relationship to the facts of criminal investigation. For reasons hinted at above, Roche the man must re-examine how he regards and treats women. He must challenge his notions of trust in and loyalty to mistresses, ladies, beggars, prostitutes, and the girl next door. In short, Roche Michel is a bright young man who has a lot to learn, especially about women. Oh, but wait, the French have a saying, as much as things change, they remain the same. Gerald Everett Jones is the author of Bonfire of the Vanderbilts and host of the Get Published radio show. 